to you and uh, you good too, to mate. see everybody here back at the show again. Uh, yeah, 13th season now, just about to start and uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be uh, to still remain a works driver for BMW and um, racing in the US, which is great. Um, it's a big program and it's an important program for BMW and uh, really looking forward to Daytona in a few weeks' time. Yeah, that's a cool race, isn't it? Oh, Daytona's awesome. I mean, driving on the banking, um, you know, is, it's an amazing experience. Lots of Lots of traffic, uh, it's very busy. Um, it's an unusual sort of combination of very slow speed, you know, infield corners and then really long straights. But unfortunately the car wasn't mega, mega quick in the test in, t in the straight lines, but we have a great car in the infield and there's 60 cars out there. It's gonna be really tough. It's gonna be a close, close race with um, all of the LMS class. Um, uh, the GT um, cars are very, very competitive. They're all really, really close. and. Obviously, you've got the prototypes as well, so it's a very busy, uh, a busy 24-hour race. Are you going to be okay with sort of keeping out of the way of the prototypes? It's a different mindset, isn't it? You've, you're in your own race, and GT is very, very competitive. Then you've got to, so you can't get in the way of the big boys. No, I mean it's, um, it is, it's very unusual having to drive in your mirrors all the time. Uh, we've always been brought up with the sprint racing to look, look ahead. You sort of feel the car trying to challenge you. You can have a little glance every now and again. Whereas in the, G in the GT class, you are living in the mirrors. You're looking in the rear view mirror all the time, and it's a very, very high level of concentration. Uh, you, I think a lot of the guys, you know, coming from prototypes who have driven in GTs say that GT driving is pretty tough because, as you say, Henry, that the cars are close, it's close racing. It's very much like a 24-hour sprint race. And, um, yeah, you've got the added, uh, you know, added job of uh, avoiding the faster cars and, you know, there's also some other slower cars, gentlemen drivers. So you've got your eyes full, forward, backwards, everywhere. Yeah. Let's just uh, uh, recap on, on DTM. Unbelievably mega cars. I mean, utter monsters, aren't they? And such high profile, but really hard to master. Yeah, I mean, the DTM is, is awesome. And I'm really pleased that I had a, you know, a few years to, to enjoy that because um, being a works driver at BMW is always already an honor, but to drive in DTM was, was something I was very excited about. And it was, you know, arguably coming at the sort of the wrong side of my career in terms of sprint racing. But, um, yeah, we developed the car and uh, we won in the first year. And, uh, you know, I'm pleased that I contributed um, towards a lot of those points. The car is awesome. I mean, downforce-wise, similar to an LMP1 car, um, V8, 500-ish uh, brake horsepower. But most, most importantly, what makes DTM so tough is that it's so, so close. I mean, a tenth of a second, your P18 or your P6. And with Q1 through to Q4, every session is on the limit. You, need, you don't just need to do one good lap in qualifying. You've got to do a good lap every run. Otherwise, you're out. And, you know, the cars are heavily biased on engineering, so really sensitive. You've got to work very closely with your engineer to get the best performance. And you're racing against guys who've, like Spengler, for instance, who have been there sort of seven or eight years. Uh, Tom Chick, 12 years, and these guys are still 30 years old. So you end up with a very, very difficult situation because you're racing against a lot of experience. And these guys just know what the car will be like, not now, but in a session's time. And that's the tough thing. BMW, I mean, set the bar really high. They came back in 2012, won the championship straight away. Absolutely. I mean, I, I wasn't surprised. I mean, I didn't expect to win the championship, but I thought we may win the odd race because the guys we had on board were just amazing. You know, the way they went about the development of the car. I was involved in that right from the beginning. Um, I was one of the first drivers to test the car and develop the car. And you could just see the working ethic was, was really top notch. Not, not necessarily Formula One style either. They were Formula One guys who were very much the touring car mentality and that was very, very good. Um, I think, you know, to win the championship in the first year was a dream come true. Uh, last year to win the Manufacturers Championship again was, was very special and we had a chance to win the Drivers' Championship right till the end. So, you know, they've done a really, really good job and I think, um, you know, the, the, the manufacturers, BMW, Audi and Mercedes are very high level so they're all so close. Uh, so to, to, to come through and win so early, it was something that really, really was impressive. Politically, would Audi and Mercedes have thought, well, hang on a minute, we want BMW in the championship because it adds kudos and profile, uh, and it's another big name. We, we need to make sure between us that they do okay. Otherwise, they might run off in a strop. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, DTM is very, very tough politically, and, uh, you know, 
you're right, at the end of the day, it is nice to have a new manufacturer in. But as soon as you've signed up, it's, you know, it's, all, it's all out for glory. And uh, I think Audi and Mercedes want to win this as much or need to win this as much as, as BMW. So once um, we had agreed to enter the championship, it then became very difficult to, 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 to find the competitiveness that we needed. From, and obviously, we weren't going to get any help from the other manufacturers. So um, th there is politics in DTM, but you know, no worse than any other formula I've driven in. Um, you have to you remember you're driving for a major manufacturer, and it's about winning races for BMW, and, and no matter how big you think you are, you're never bigger than the brand. So um, yeah, right, it's yeah. something a prof all professional drivers have to get their head around sooner or later. The stadium at Hockenheim, there's more people in it than there is for the German Grand Prix at, at, a, at a DTM race. I know, it's, it amazing. is amazing. The first DTM race that I, that I drove in at Hockenheim, in fact, I scored the very first points for BMW at that race, and uh, I was just blown away with the magnitude of the event and and if anything, it gets a better live audience than it does TV. Um, one, of the, one of the challenges with DTM is it doesn't have exposure outside of Germany. But you go to Germany and it's like driving for, in a Grand Prix. You're like, uh, you feel like a Grand Prix driver. It is unbelievable. And you know, each circuit gets an amazing attendance. Hockenheim is probably the best. But you go to Norris Ring and you know, places like that, you still get a mega audience. And, and that does add a lot to the atmosphere. The racing's good. The cars are awesome, sound great. And uh, it's very, very close, and that's what people want to see. Uh, would it be a bit of a nest of vipers for a non-Germanic manufacturer to come and play? I mean, Alpha did okay. Yeah, I think it's 20 possible. years ago. <clears throat> I think it's possible. I just think uh, uh, you've got to look at these things and, and see where the value is for the manufacturer. And quite clearly, you know, three of the biggest German manufacturers driving in their back garden has a, has a definite value. Um, obviously, a German market's extremely big, and I think it comes down to the marketplace and the interest. I think that DTM has a lot to offer, but at the same time, um, if the market doesn't fit, then you'll end up you know, better off going into world touring car, British touring car, or you know, sports car racing. Um, and it's just down to the markets. But I think a manufacturer could come in and compete. Um, but again, it depends on the TV exposure. And that's one of the issues with, that DTM has. OK, looking forward, sports cars. Um, really exciting times for US sports car racing, a merger of, uh, of Grand Am and um, American Le Mans series. Good times? Absolutely. I mean, United Sports Car Championship, I think, has got a lot of potential. NASCAR own the rights or have bought the championship, basically. And um, they have seem to have merged all the classes into one. Um, and that means that you've got uh, a massive grid, which is what everybody wants to see. And more importantly, you've got a lot of manufacturers. You've got Aston Martin, you've got Porsche. You've got Ferrari, you've got BMW. There's a lot of big manufacturers who are taking it very seriously, actually. And on top of that, you go to some fantastic circuits like Daytona, Sebring, Watkins Glen, Long Beach, Laguna Seca. Um, and it seems to have a great, a, a great atmosphere. I love it. And uh, the racing's close. I've raced out there in, in ALMS, um, in Sebring, and, and, and Petit Le Mans. And it, it is really tough racing. Um, it's as tough as you'll get anywhere. It, it, it really is like a touring car race for, for 6, 10, or 12 hours. So, it's, um, yeah, I love the championship, and uh, I think it's really good for me in my career. I'm really excited to, to still be a works driver and uh, still driving for BMW, and I think that's very special. That's a big honor, and uh, BMW are committing and very serious about this. So, we're pushing hard. Oh, always good to see you, mate. Um, we wish you well. Have a good year. Be quick and be safe. Yeah. Thank you very much, Henry. Good to see you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday night. I don't think you'd be looking quite as sharp as you are now. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Prio.